Game modes are insanely important. They can make or break your indie game. So how do you best utilize them? How can you make them matter to your players? I spent the last several weeks researching how game modes help Unreal Engine understand what your game's rules are and how it utilizes those. I'm gonna show you how to make them work for your game with practical examples. Unreal Engine handles game modes in a slightly different way than you might expect. Rather than creating a lot of different game modes, you're gonna to wanna to only collect a few. Um, the reason for that is uh, each level can have a game mode um, but to actually change a level's game mode at runtime is not an easy task. So it's a lot easier to either have multiple levels, each with a different game mode, or as I will show you here in a moment, much easier option, especially for things like um, single player games would be to actually just have the modes within the game mode. So let me show you what that might look like. Let me go ahead and open up my game mode here. And so as you can see here, it looks very simple, but this actually contains two whole game modes um, that work very differently. So as you can see here on begin play, I get some variables. And from here, I'm just casting to my player and gathering them. And then I'm casting to my game instance and also saving a variable there. And then I am getting the current game mode from that game instance. And so with that, um, I am actually returning the current game mode. Now the reason for doing this is upon starting my level, I want to decide what game mode I, my player is currently in and actually set up the level based on that. So here's an example, I have two different game modes, um, one called Time Strike, which is sort of like a, um, almost like a speed run, how, quick, how quickly can you defeat a set number of enemies, versus Annihilation, which is a more custom free flow um, where players can actually um, set up the enemy fleet however they want and fight it out and see who can get them, you know, defeat the most amount of points in an enemy. From there, I have a custom event um, called End Objective. This can be called from either one, and then based on which one it is, it actually can do a different thing. Here, on Annihilation, I don't do anything because it's just a very bare bones game mode at the moment. Um, but then on Time Strike, I'm actually updating a score. And this just gets called whenever the enemy fleet is completely destroyed. Um, it actually is called by the enemy fleet. If you look at our fleet controller here. When the fleet is destroyed, I just get the current game mode, cast it to my game mode, and then just call the event and objective. Now, um, let's actually talk about, you know, so this, you know, is the very bare bones of what my objectives are in my game modes. And so let's actually go into one of these and kind of look at what that looks like. So here for Annihilation Spawn, we do something a little bit more advanced. So I'm gonna show you this one. So as you can see here, we have our game instance and then our fleet builder composition, which then actually, as you can see here, is spawning in a fleet. And so what this is doing is this is giving very basic orders to my fleet and then spawning them based on a set composition that I've decided. Now that decision gets made at the main menu by the player. They have a whole fleet builder menu where they can go in and add whatever fleet type ships they want um, to actually face when they're in combat, which is very different from here. So the time strike, this actually has a predefined fleet. Um, so this technically uses a different fleet controller, but in the future it'll be switched over to that other fleet controller. This is my current AI that players actually can, you know, battle. Um, the other one is more of a testing AI, uh, but I've given it a fleet name, um, some spawn locations, and I've actually started a timer. So this timer allows me to actually track how long players have been playing in that level. And it's used for players to try and, you know, see who can complete the level the fastest. So with that, that is using an enumerator here. As you can see, I've got time strike and and I'm just giving them very quick descriptions so that when players are selecting what game mode they want to play, um, I can give them a little bit of information about those game modes. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that actually looks like functionally. So you can see here, um, I have my main menu and I actually have the start option here. And this gives me my two game modes. 
and you can see here I hover over them and I get my two options. And it's as simple as um, I go ahead and let's select Annihilation and then I select what ships I want to fight against and I hit Start Battle. And what that does is that actually starts the level and it spawns the enemy fleet over there. Let me show you the screen so you can see. There we go. And it actually starts the ships off. So if we go ahead and actually look at the mode selection here, all I'm doing here is casting to that game instance. Okay, set my current game mode to this if I've selected Annihilation. And here I actually set up the Fleet Builder. Uh, and the Fleet Builder is where I actually launch the level. But if I'm doing Time Strike, then with that one, I don't select anything. So it's as simple as just starting the level. So I set my game mode and start the level. And then whenever the level loads, because this is the default game mode set for that level, at begin play, it just gets whatever variables it needs and then starts whatever game mode I have selected. And the cool thing about this is it's pretty extensible. You can basically add whatever type of game mode you want. And if you ever come across a situation where you have a game mode that you don't necessarily want to be um, tied down to this one level. So let's say you've got a multiplayer mode um, that could be across any number of levels. Um, what you'll do instead with that is you'll have a map that is your sort of uh, lobby map and from there you'll have a custom game mode that is for multiplayer specifically and you'll go ahead and you'll load in um, everything that is going on there with that and you'll you'll use your game mode to actually handle um, whatever it is you need done in the lobby and so that's sort of a basic overall view of how to use game modes in Unreal Engine. Um, so why do we use them this way? What, what is the benefit of using game modes um, in this sort of confined, you know, a single mode is the actual, you know, we have an actual one mode blueprint class. Um, and the reason for that is it's much easier in Unreal Engine to build in all the features and functions you want into a single game, gameplay mode than to actually have separate modes. Because each mode would need a map, at that point, if you ever want to edit anything in the map, you'd have to go in and edit each and every single one. Um, versus if you limit it to, you know, say single player, multiplayer, and, you know, sandbox or something like that, um, you can get and get very detailed on the different modes you want within those groups. So in single player, here's an example, I have two, but I could add any number of them just based on this enumerator. I could have a hundred different game modes if I want. This is really important. Um, because when our players are playing our games, they're going to want to have a variety of experiences. Different players like different things. By breaking things down like this and making them so segmented instead of having a single um, game mode that is just doing the same thing no matter what, um, you can break this down into things like here. I've got Time Strike and I've got Annihilation, which are very different game modes. Um, even though it is using Unreal Engine's default single game mode. So a lot of a lot of indie games I noticed, you know, they'll have a single game mode. They'll have the one way to do things. Um, you know, a lot of them are like, for example, the zombies on it, a lot of them are just survive. You know, you jump into the level and you just run around, pick up guns and stuff. But game modes, especially a variety of game modes, um, keep players coming back because different players like different things. Some players want conquest, some people want TDM, uh, depends on the player. So having a variety of game modes is very handy to have to get your players to keep coming back, to keep playing, to trying new things. Um, but yeah, so that was my pretty quick guide to game modes. It's a very simple system and it can be very extendable. Um, those two examples are just the two that I've done, um, but definitely my game changing more and more as time goes on. Um, but otherwise, that's it for today. So good luck and good hunting.